Um, what we've seen in the last 36 hours or so is really a, a rash of heroin overdoses. To, to, be, to be separated from polysubstance overdoses too, we actually uh, generally have issues with that as well, but those are, for instance, things like pills, like Oxycontin, Percocets, but we're talking specifically about heroin as a substance. Um, and so looking at the numbers in the last 36 hours, we've seen seven confirmed heroin overdoses that made it to the hospital. None of them died. There was uh, one person pronounced in the field, I believe, Ron? One presumption in the field. Uh, also thought to be heroin? Yes. And so uh, compared to the numbers that uh, Mike just gave you, that is certainly still a significant number. Uh, there were 15 total uh, uh, overdoses in the same period, but that's including the seven. But it was not, um, they weren't all heroin. So they're actually, they're veteran users. They've used heroin before. They actually know what doses work for them, uh, and they're reporting that they didn't expect the, what, what they were using to be as strong. So the thought is perhaps something is out there that's stronger than what they're used to. They're using the same amount, uh, and then all of a sudden they're overdosed by accident, frankly. You know, it's really uh, more about the concentration and the power of the opioid within the substance. So whether it's uh, more pure or cut with something different, um, that we don't know. Uh, that might actually be up to the toxicologist. But several years ago, we saw uh, heroin laced with fentanyl, which is much stronger. Um, I wouldn't say more pure, but just different. Different things within the powder that you're using to either snort or inject. And so um, that's how I would explain it. So, you know, one thing just to explain about Narcan and to piggyback off what Ron said, the time course is typically this. Um, you use heroin, if you use too much of it, your respirations slow down, and if you're overdosed, your respirations actually almost come to a stop, at which point you stop delivering oxygen to your vital organs, your heart, your brain, um, and then if you don't get found in time, you die. Um, so typically when you administer Narcan, it reverses heroin or really any opioid. Um, you have to get enough to reverse the amount of opioids, uh, which include pills uh, like Percocet and Oxycontin, um, and sometimes you have to administer a lot. So the fentanyl-laced heroin that we were seeing a few years ago, you actually have to give multiple doses of Narcan, and people were hospitalized because Narcan wears off in about 45 minutes to an hour. And so, um, but when it when you reverse, it's really within about a minute or two. They come to completely with it. Um, sometimes, most of the times, they don't know where they are. Um, and so, you know, the time course is tricky. Um, I can tell you from the seven we saw yesterday, I don't think, I don't think anyone got hospitalized. The vast majority got released, uh, but that's typical. So what happens is you wake up, you know exactly where you are, what happened. A lot of times you're quite embarrassed. You don't want to be in the ER and you want to leave. And given federal and state laws, you are not allowed to hold anyone against their will if they're of sound mind and body. And so actually, a few of them left against medical advice without us observing them to make sure that the Narcan actually didn't wear off and their breathing stopped again too. And that's a perennial problem we deal with with uh, opiate overdoses. So it's usually, you know, you don't see seven in a 24, 48 hour period. If you um, just really look at the numbers that Mike gave earlier, it's, you know, once every couple of weeks you would see one, um, but not, not in, a, in a bunch like that. So it, it is out of the ordinary. Mm. I do know a patient, uh, at least one patient, was willing to talk to New London police. Um, I, you'd have to ask them as to what they, they told them. Um, but yes, the goal was to try to find um, the source uh, of this heroin. In the uh, BLS community, and now widely used by the uh, paramedics, it's something called a nasal atomizer. What it does is it turns the Narcan into a mist, and it is absorbed through the nasal passage. So uh, the Narcan comes in a pre-filled Brista jet. A pre what? It's a pre-filled Brista jet. It's called a. Uh, it's a syringe that's got a pre-filled amount of Narcan in it. Um, it carries <coughs> two milligrams of, of Narcan. What, what you want to do is administer one milligram each nostril for a full dose of uh, two milligrams. So this is what it looks like when it's fully put together. The uh, foam sponge gets inserted into the nostril, pointed towards the ear so that it's absorbed a little bit better. Half of this medication is then put into that nostril. Quickly you go to the second nostril and you administer the other milligram. So it's a full two milligrams because how it is absorbed. Um, if we give it IV or as an injection, we have the choice to give a little bit less just to get them breathing. 
Uh, sometimes when you totally remove uh, the, the effects of the uh, opiate, uh, they can come up and you know, vomit, uh, can cause seizures at times. So the goal is just to get them breathing again, get them to the hospital where the doctors and nurses can uh, work on them a little bit more. But with nasal atomizers, the full two milligrams are administered because of how it's absorbed. Now, it's important to know that if they um, don't have a heartbeat, this is not going to work. The nasal atomizer only works while circulation is happening. It has to circulate through the blood system. So in, in the cases where they don't have a pulse and we're trying to do resuscitation, our only choice is to uh, give it IV um, in those cases.